What's everybody? Welcome back to So yeah Quilty. Now today we have a special video for you because I think everyone needs one of these. That is these little tiny tote bins, but better yet, the Wonder Clip storage bin. Let's get started. Now guys, just a couple of things to keep in mind as we're making this project, that this is a 100% scrap friendly. We actually took all of the scraps and random-ish pieces sewed it all together to make this project. I absolutely love to have a little wonder clip baggie or a little bin here that you can set on your table. Always remember that they're there. So let's dive right on into the, I really can't say they're cutting instructions because in reality, what I got here is just a ton of little teeny pieces and scraps that was one from one of our last projects here. And you can see that they are all shapes and sizes. Oh, that's a long piece right there. There doesn't have to be really rhyme or reason to how we're piecing this together. As long as um, we're trying to get like a long rectangle here, it needs to be at least four and a half inches wide by about 16 and a half inches long to make a bin around this size here, which is the perfect size for Wonder Clips. So I'm gonna just throw out some pieces here, try to see what colors I've got going on. Try to halfway get a good look of how we're doing things here. So got some pieces, I got some strips. Most of them are rectangles because that's kind of what we ended up with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in like a little piece here, a little piece right there, kind of start piecing in my, what I think it's going to look like. And no rhyme or reason here. I think I'm going to add a really long strip right there. Got to add a little piece in there just kind of get a general idea of what we're going for. I actually want to cut that one there, so I'll put that one there. And let's add a little something there. Just again, guys, random-ish. Just throw in your pieces, see how you like them to lay. And I'll throw that one right there. That's generally kind of like the space seam that I'm gonna need, about four inches tall. Like I said, about 16 and a half inches wide. So it's time to start sewing them together. What I'm going to do, make it simple on it, everyone here, is I'm going to take all three of these pieces here. I'm going to show that. I'm going to sew them together. Obviously, it's not going to come out straight, not going to come out perfect because they're all different sizes. But we can cut and square and do all that as we're going along. So on over to the sewing machine. Let me move these out of the way. And lay down some thread here. For anyone who says like, well, I, I can't sew straight or anything like that, does not matter in this project at all. So next one, I like that there. I'm gonna put that on like so. And I'm gonna keep just sewing, making a little strip here. Put that on like so. And I'm gonna keep just sewing, making a little strip here. So that gives me my first little piece. Now what I want to measure is that I'm over four and a half inches long, which I happen to be here. I'm going to measure my next piece because I want to add that right there onto the side, which I'm going to do. And again, no rhyme or reason here. Just try and kill off some scraps. Let me open that up so everyone can start seeing what's happening here. And you can see that not everything's straight. It kind of adds to the uniqueness of the bin itself. So just keep on doing this. Keep making it up as you go along. Like I bet you anything I could add in a piece right here. So I'm going, I'm going to. And what I'll actually do just to add it a little bit more. Try to add a little bit of straightness to this. I'm going to take my rotary cutter. Cut off the tiniest bit here. I'm gonna sew these two together. It's all kind of wacky and crazy as we're going along here. I'm gonna sew that to this. And we're gonna just keep on doing this until I have a strip long enough. So a little montage for you.
a little pro tip for you too while we're doing this is I just cut this piece right here. It's going to be really, really skinny. It kind of just adds in to like the dimension of it. Because if we keep everything kind of blocky in shape, it will look that way in the end. So to add a couple of sh smaller strips in there as we're going along, just adds a little bit more to it. And again, it does not matter if we're sewing straight or not. It's more of a kind of get it done attitude there. So I'm going to add those to there. So, you're probably going to come up with something roughly like this, okay? It's not quite straight, it's not quite perfect yet because we got to cut it down, we got to make it square. But a really good thing to do at this point, starch it, starch it real well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some flatter here, best press, whatever you might have laying around there. Give it just a good spray. I'm also going to spray the back because there's lots of seams here. And I didn't iron at all as I was going on here. I just went straight for it, started sewing everything together. So let's just give this a nice clean iron, get it as flat as possible. Again, it's kind of the charm of what this is, very scrappy. Now that we have this all ironed, pressed down flat, it's time to turn this into a four and a half by 16 and a half inch strip. Now, best way to do this that I've found is I'm gonna line off one edge here and kind of trim off the uh, smallest little bit that I can off the top here. Some places it's going to be a little bit, some people it's going to, some places it's going to be a little bit more. I'm going to cut all the way down, get rid of this, and this is absolutely viable to make another one. So I'm going to throw that aside there. Now that I have two straight edges, perfect. Just like that. Now that I have kind of my straight cut here. And no matter what, when you have piecing like this, it does not look straight. It looks wonky still because it's, again, part of the charm. Then from there, I want to cut this into a 16 inch strip. I'm gonna use my lines on my mat here to line this up properly. And I need 16 and a half inches, which just so happens to be right there on that green. So that green piece is going away. So I've got my 16 and a half by four and a half inch strip. Now it's time to do a little bit of quilting. Grab any kind of scrap batting that you might have laying around here. This is just a piece that I pulled off of one of the last quilts we actually did. And it's time to quilt this. Quilt this in whatever fashion that you like. You can go all wonky with the quilting. You can just lay down some lines anything that you like. What I found to look really nice on this is I'm going to just start right here at the top. I'm going to sew all the way down and then I'm going to just really fast quilt all the way down from there. That will give it kind of the charm. Not all the lines will be perfectly straight. It'll kind of flow with the overall design anyways. So I'm going to throw this in here 
And like I said, I'm gonna be really careful on my very first one. Give myself a quarter inch seam. So now this is safely attached to my fabric. It's time to just lay down some stitches, guys. So I'm gonna get pretty close to a quarter inch, maybe more, maybe a little bit less, and I'm just gonna go down this whole thing as quickly as possible. And if you are a little bit off here, it adds to the charm, okay? It's one of these kind of projects. So let's let it go. Do it again, all the way down. So now that I've done a couple lines, going this direction, I'm going to just flip my whole project around and start coming down the other direction. That way I don't have too much distortion in my project. So I just finished up quilting this. Let me get that string out of there. So we've just finished up quilting this. And again, you can see that string is gonna bother me now. You can see that the quilting isn't perfect. It's wonky, it's wavy, but that's kind of the charm. Now, I'm gonna just straighten everything up here. By straighten, I really mean remove the batting. So, a little bit of batting there, a little bit of batting here. A little bit here as well. Now, here's a moment that you kind of have to decide what you want to do. The bottom of this, let me pull out my wonder clips, can either be a solid color or you can make it patchy like the outside of the back. I found it looks right when it has just a solid or a plain fabric there, it kind of ties it all in together. So I've already gone ahead and cut out my little piece here and all it is, okay. and all it is is a four and a half inch square and I've got a little bit of batting there as well. If you want to quilt the bottom, you can. If you want to quilt the bottom, you can, or you can leave it plain, Jane, if you like. If you're going to leave it plain though, you will have to tack down the edges here, which is what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna just take this, give it like a 1 8 inch seam. It's very, very small. So I've tacked it down right onto that batting and I'm going to cut the batting off of the fabric here. That way I still have a little bit of weight to the bottom. I still have the batting so it will fill right while we're handling the bag or the little tote here. But it doesn't have to be as heavily quilted as our last little bit. So just like that, it's kind of like a two-sided piece of fabric there. Now, from here, we have to kind of assemble the body of this back. Super easy to do. Take our strip, put right sides together, and we're going to sew all the way down. 
normal quarter inch seam. Back stitch on the top. And if you back stitch on the top, we all know you have to back stitch on the bottom. Just like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my best here to kind of separate the two pieces here on my seam just to make it so it's not so bulky. Best way to do that is I'm going to grab my iron, get my iron hot there, and I'm going to just do my best to open up the seam. Take your time here and kind of just finagle that seam open. And it's not that big of a seam, but it will help with the bulkiness of the project. Gonna drop that iron tip right in between the seams. Give it a good press down, good iron, just to open up that seam a little bit there. Just like so. Then from here, it's time to kind of assemble this bag. Now, you have to decide where you want your seam. I like to put it in between a side instead of putting it right on the corner of our little square. So what I'll do is I'll go like so, and I will measure about halfway and make my very first side the side that has the seam. I'm gonna drop a wonder clip right down on top of there, and I'm gonna put one on each side. Now we kind of have to make everything form to this little teeny square here. Now, the best way to get it to form to the square is just slowly go around and put some more wonder clips in it. So I'm gonna take this side now, hold it up tight, put one in the center, put one on the left side, put one on the right side. Same thing here, kind of pull everything taut and tight. Put one in the center, put one on the left, put one on the right. Kind of see what I'm doing here. The last piece here, same exact thing, it's just a little bit more tight because there's not very much give or play at this point. But put one right there, and put one right there. Now, when you make bags and things like this, just a little pro tip here is right here on the ends, the square piece that's on the bottom, all the little tabs or all the little dog ears need to be standing straight up. That will make sure that when you close off your bag, you don't accidentally put one of those inside of the bag, which does happen sometimes. So now it's time to head over to the sewing machine and sew all four sides all the way closed. So. What I like to do is go all the way off my fabric there, because if we do that to all four sides, then our last stitch will actually lock in the stitch before it. So, I'm gonna just keep going around. Take your time, make sure your fabric's all out of your way as you're sewing. Now, next step is we're gonna turn this whole thing right sides out it kind of shows us what our finish is looking like. It's gonna show us how we did on our sewing. And it will give you kind of the general shape of your bag. Right? It's got, got that feel, it's got that vibe to it. Now it's time to, I'm gonna dump my clips out this way into that one. It's time to make the lining of this. Can we do this scrappy 100%? I find though it's a little bit distracting if we have a outside body real scrappy and an inside body, or sorry, the lining scrappy as well. So I'm gonna just make a very nice simple lining here, which let me grab my pieces here that I have. So now that I've got my pieces, it's essentially the exact same as the outside of the bag. This right here is a four and a half inch square. I've got two of them because I'm planning on making a couple more of these. 
And this right here is a four and a half by 16 and a half inch strip. And you guessed it, we're gonna fold it right in half and do the exact same thing that we just did on the body of the bag. But we don't need to quilt it, we don't need any batting because it's already in the body of the bag. So I've got my shape there. I prefer just because that's kind of how I am. So I've got my shape there. I prefer just because that's kind of how I am to open up the seam on this just to make sure that it lines up perfectly with the body of the bag. And we're gonna follow the exact same instruction as the body of the bag. Take out our wonder clips. Stick our little square inside and start clipping all the way around. Montage. I don't know why that's the my montage sound, but it is. So guys, this is a little bit harder to do because it's a little bit flimsy due to not having any batting but that's what it will look like. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. So all the way around all four corners here. And guys, as we're sewing around here, it's very, very easy that we do not paying attention or whatever and the bag fold in on itself and we sew our bag lining to the bottom. Just double check before you stick it underneath your sewing machine that you have everything out of the way before you start. Now, on a lot of bag patterns or a lot of tote patterns, they're gonna tell you to leave a little opening right here in the lining. That way when we turn our bag and flip it right side out, that you have a way to do that. I'm gonna show you a different way to do it. I feel like it comes out a little bit cleaner, especially on a project like this. So I'm gonna finish off sewing this. Just like the last bag, pull out my scissors, clip off the ends here or the little dog tails. There shouldn't be too much actually. Just like so, clean up my work area. Now, here's how we do this. Let me get all my wonder clips in one spot. What I'm gonna do is take my body of my bag and then I'm going to I like to do this the other way. I'm gonna flip this back to wrong side out. It's kind of how I do it. I'm gonna flip my lining right side out. And I'm gonna put right sides together. You can do this the other way as well, but I feel like it's easier to follow this way. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this entire thing inside of this one here. Take your time to line things up how you like it. The most crucial thing is you have to line up your seams. There's only two seams to line up. It's pretty simple to do. Make sure those are lined up. Put a clip in it. You can now finagle things around if you need to. We're gonna just put a ton of clips all the way around this to get the lining exactly like taunt or straight with the bag. So I'm gonna put that one in. I'll move down the line here and put that one in.
we're going to sew all the way around this, except we're gonna leave ourselves about a two inch, two and a half inch opening. Now to mark that, I'm going to take two yellow ones and I'm gonna put them side by side with another clip here. That way when I know I hit the double clip, I stop. It's, it's a way to remember really all, all it is. So I'm gonna start right here on the double clip, go all the way around until I land here with the other double clips. Makes it simple. Take off my clips here. And I have this little teeny hole here. Now, if you make the hole a little bit too big, it's totally okay to go back in there and shrink it up a little bit if you like. So, got this little hole here. It's now time to flip the bag through the hole right side out. Now some people are gonna be like, well, you just left a hole in the top of your bag. Watch, it's a way to finish this off that I think looks really professional and very clean. But you're gonna just take your time, kind of ease this on out of that hole which is super easy to do because I left it big enough. You're gonna push out all your ends. This is finish work at this point, so make sure we get all of our ends, all of our points out. Looking good, looking good. Now we're gonna stuff this inside of the bag, just like so. You want it in there nice and clean. Now, something that's important here as we're doing this, we want the outside of the bag and the inside of the bag or the lining to line up perfectly at the very top of the bag. Much like this, as you see here, it's a 50-50 all the way around. Now, to achieve that, again, wonder clips, this way everyone needs them, is you just kind of force that in place and you put a wonder clip right on top of it and you just keep doing that all the way around. Now, when we get to the opening, we're gonna just tuck that in on both sides and clip it down as well. Since we have to go all the way around this anyways to give it a nice clean finish, it seals off the top, it seals the hole, it does everything for us in one time, and we don't have to deal with a opening inside of the bag or an open lining that we have to seal up later. So, kind of an all-in-one, get it done. Just like so, I like to start by sewing the opening first, that way I know it is done properly and that I'm not rushing myself. Then once you get through closing up the lining hole there, everything else is super easy. You just go all the way around. Don't really have to fuss or mess with it too much here. Just make sure that you have that 50-50 on each side, lining and the body of the bag. So just like that guys, your project is complete and I'm a big believer of having a little teeny tote or bin for wonder clips, that way you know always where they are. And if you wanna make this project bigger or smaller, you can. Just make sure you make the proper adjustments. For instance, this right here is a much longer bin. And all I did was add a couple of inches in width to my project on both the bag body and the liner, and it came out just perfect. Now, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you had, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and don't be afraid to share it with your friends. On top of that, if you need to pick up some wonder clips or really any notion out there, check out soyadquilting.com where you can pick up everything that you've seen here. Thank you so much guys for joining and we'll see you next week. Yeah.